to my channel, it's Kay Heistad, and today I'm going to be making some resin sun catchers. These are actually an order I've received for a Christmas present. This lady contacted me and she wanted a hundred dollars worth of my resin sun catchers, so I am super excited. It feels really nice to know that somebody wants to buy these. She's giving them as a Christmas present to her daughter. Um, and they're going to use them as charms on their Christmas tree, like little ornaments. Uh, I don't know, it just makes me really happy to think that someone's Christmas tree is going to be filled with my artwork and that that's going to be something they put up every year, you know, like a cherished heirloom from mother to daughter. I don't know, it just feels really nice that they wanted me to be a part of that. So I'm really grateful that I get to make these for her and I hope that they love them. Okay. Step one, I need to get myself organized. Uh, so it's going to be seven small sun catchers of three honeycombs and a bee. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to make three batches of separate colors. So I've already done one, which is this light yellow. In my mold, I have the second color. And these have been drying overnight, so they are ready to come out. Hmm, they're actually a little closer to the first one than I would like, but they are just a little bit darker. Wow! A little bit more of an amber color. Okay, so I'm going to pop these out. Then next I will be mixing up my darker color. So that one's going to be like a caramel brown color. Now that I'm putting these on the cardboard, I can see there is a little bit more differentiation in the color. I don't know if you can see the lighter ones on this side and the darker ones on this side. Of course, it's got little blips in the way. There we go. So my mold, really cute. I bought this mold on Amazon. I think it was $20. Inside it has 10 honeycomb molds and then it has what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine bee molds. So it's a kind of a medallion with a bee in the middle. I'll show you what that looks like. I did some knobs for one of the dressers I remodeled using the bees. They turned out really nice. Uh, and then I also did a couple like wall hangers. Next thing I'm going to do is mix up some more resin, pour it into the molds with the darker color, and I'm going to let it set. I'm working at around 9 in the morning right now. Uh, I want to make sure I give this lots of time to set and air out before my class tonight. So I'm supposed to teach a class at 7.20. And I want to make sure my office is completely defumed before then because sitting in a room with a red sun is not something you want to do. Very toxic. The fumes will give you a headache if you're in them for too long without uh, a mask or a ventilator. So I want to make sure I have lots of time for the sun to dissipate before I have to work in here again. With that in mind, I have a mask that I put on when I work with them. Uh, it's probably a better idea to have a ventilator you can pick those up from like Home Depot. Um, my super sophisticated resin studio is actually just my office that I teach in. Um, when we put down vinyl flooring, we didn't glue it. So I can actually pull it up, which is what I have beside me here. Just pull it up so that I'm working on the concrete. Then I put some cardboard underneath it so that it's protected when I'm working. And that's why it's safe to do resin in my house. Life hack. So, pro tip, be lazy about your flooring. It works out. Okay. Okay, I can get ready to do the resin. So I'm going to take out two cups. I just use these little paper cups. I think I bought them for one of my classes a while ago. And I've just been using them because they came in a pack of like a hundred. Um, so I use these. I have a little 
course, it's not here. I have a little plastic uh, tablespoon measurement that I use, which is also just from Dollarama. It used to be the one I used for cooking, and then <laughs> you cannot use it for cooking and for resin. Do not try. Same with the molds. These are technically baking molds. Don't use them for resin and then for baking. If you want to bake with them, do the baking first and then do the resin. Not safe. Um, technically it's food safe, but like when you're mixing them and everything, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. Oh God, I'm so disorganized this morning. What am I doing? Okay. So the first thing, lower this so you can see what's happening. Ugh, bad. The first thing you do is put on the mask that you already had out for yourself in the room. Do it like this. Okay. So first thing you're going to do, take your parts A and B. Okay. Take your little tablespoon. I'm going to start with the part A. Don't shake these up before you pour them. What I've done, it's got a big, huge mouth, so I just poked a little pinhole size in there uh, so I can squeeze it, get a more precise measurement. Oh, sh Gloves. Gloves I should have had on before. You might be wondering why I have two different gloves. I ripped one of my gloves last night. That's it. Usually I use the plastic ones. Today I'm using one of these just to have two gloves. Okay. So I've done one. Do the remainder in there. It likes to stick to the bottom of the cup. Okay, and then I'll do two. This is still part A. I, uh, I'm doing two tablespoons. I found that that's just a little more than enough for the 10 comb molds. So I can pour the rest into my other ornaments I'm doing. Make sure it's to the brim. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes because it's clear. What I use to stir, super professional, just a shish kebab stick. It's got a flat end instead of a point. I use that to scoop out. Make sure it's all in there. Not just because I hate wasting products, but because it will mess up the measurement if you still have some left. Um, if you want to do a perfect job, you could use two different spoons to measure, but I don't want to waste two spoons. Okay, part B. Oops. This is the point when you really need the mask. Once you mix the two of them together, that's what uh, gets the fumes going. Make sure you don't get hair in it. That would be a disaster. Then you mix, you need to mix for three minutes. You wanna mix slowly, but making sure to get the sides and the bottom. If you mix too quickly, it'll make bubbles, and those bubbles can be hard to get rid of once you pour it into the mold. Usually I watch videos while I do this, but uh, you are on my phone right now. Very rude of you. Okay, once your three minutes is up, you pour it to a second container. Why? Because the instructions said so. I'm thinking it's probably more important if you're doing bigger quantities, like say you have a gallon pail of resin, uh, you want to make sure that you've gotten everything off the sides and the bottom so that it is properly mixed. You don't want to have more of one than the other. 
Um, for smaller quantities like this, I've not done it before and it was fine, but this is for demonstration purposes, so let's be more precise than I usually am. Now you're supposed to stir for three more minutes. Um, if you're adding another color in, now's the time to add it. I have a little box of dyes. I'm going to add color in a second. I want to give this just one more stir. So I have yellow. Ooh. Lemon yellow. Ah. And caramel. Wow. For the lightest one, I did mostly lemon yellow with a splash of yellow. Then I, for the second one, I did mostly yellow with a splash of lemon yellow. For this one, it's going to be yellow and caramel. I want it quite dark to give some contrast. So there's it with the colors in. Give it a stir. There's my color. Oh, it's showing up nicely on camera. It's a little darker in person. Okay, now I'm gonna pour into the little honeycomb molds. I hope I have enough for all 10, but as long as I have seven, then I don't need to do it again because I'm just making the seven charms. The rest are going to be extras. So you just need a really thin layer. Ooh, make sure there's no hairs. Hate that. For these ones, what I'm doing with them, you pretty much just want it thin enough to cover the bottom and not much thicker. You can use your stick to push out to the sides, make sure it's all covered. You don't have to stir while it's in here, it should just smooth, but sometimes it kind of sticks and doesn't want to fill completely. So do just make sure there's a little bit everywhere. Also helps you tell if you need to pour a little more in. So I have seven, and they're all filled in. Oh, this one's not. Good. So that's the seven I need, and I still have leftover, so I'll do an eight. I mean, there is. No. Well, we'll find out. Oh yeah, there's totally enough for 10. Good. That's nice. Then I have three left over from each batch, which means I can do three more to sell. Okay, those are done. What's happening here? Check for any little bubbles. I use the little pointy stick. You see a bubble? You can pop it. Check for hairs too. Then you want to cover to make sure no dust or hair floats in there while it's going. Okay, I'll take my gloves off. And we're done! Alright, I'm back. I took a little break, ate a little lunch, and now I am all set up here to paint my bees. So I have some already done from the last time I was making them. Uh, it's really easy. You just take the leftover resin, mix in a little bit of sparkles, and ta-da! You've got a sparkly little bee. He's adorable. So all he needs now is some black stripes and some white wings. So I have Dollarama Artist Series acrylic paint in black. Anyways, there it is. It's black paint. Cheap black paint. I have the same, oh no, it's deco art, also from Dollarama, white acrylic paint. I'm not too worried about the quality of the paint because I seal it anyway with a clear nail polish. So it's not going to chip and flake because that nail polish is going to hold it in. Um, let me fix my camera here so you can see what I'm doing. So now that I have the wings all painted in, I'm going to pour a little bit of the black and I'll go through and I'll paint the heads of each of them. Trying to be careful not to get it on the wings that I just painted. So I have another small brush. Coat it in. Okay, 
there's one head down. I'll show you when I have them all. Okay, I finished painting the stripes and the heads, and they are so cute. I've made a couple little errors, or I've gone over the lines in a couple places. So I have a toothpick. I'm just going to go and pick them uh, to straighten them out. Works really well. The resin doesn't crack, but the paint just chips off. Okay, and the last thing I need to do before I glue them all together is take a little bit of clear nail polish and do at least two coats over each of them. That's just to seal the acrylic paint that I've been using so that it doesn't chip off. Uh, this is just Sally Hansen Hard as Nails. I'm sure you could use any clear nail polish and it would work. I'll go through all of these and then we'll be ready to glue. So what I'll do is I'll take one from each color, make them into a little group of three, figure out where the bee goes. I like right here. Why not? Actually, I find they can be kind of cute if the wing goes over the edge. Maybe I'll do that on this one. To get a little bit of overhang. So it looks like the bee is flying around. Then I just take some crazy glue, super glue, whatever this one is. Super glue. Got this from Dollarama. As you can tell, I get most of my products from Dollarama. Only the highest class here. Then I very carefully, so I don't leave any fingerprints or any skin, <laughs> On each piece, I just glue oops, around the edge of one of them and along the side of one of them. So put those two together, this one with the wet edge together, and then I'll glue my bee on. Easy as that. Another little tip, if you notice there are any imperfections, in your hexagons. For example, this one has a couple little air bubbles here and so does this one. I just put them together, put the B over top of that. You never know. Or if you have more than just two, you can do the uh, drill through another spot that has it and tie like a bow on it. Harder to see as well. Lots of ways to hide them. Careful when you're lining them up that they are lush at the top. Just need to hold them for a second. They should set. And put them down. the glue oh no oh no yeah that one doesn't want to glue in probably because it wasn't the right side That's good. And ta-da! A beautiful little sun catcher. I think the bee turned out particularly lovely on these ones. Okay, and we'll just repeat that process seven times. Okay, I have seven little charms and enough pieces left over to make one big one, which is great for in a window, a window sun catcher. Uh, I had one hanging before, but I sold it, so maybe this one will be mine. I still need two more bees to put on it, but that's easy enough to mix up next time I pour uh, resin onto my Christmas mold that I'm making. So, Okay, all that remains for these is to have a little hole drilled into them and be strung with a ribbon. Alright, I am set up here with my handy dandy little drill. That's a hurricane. It has a whole bunch of different functions on it, actually. It's got 
uh, sanding and grinding tools. It can polish. It can, uh, well, do pretty much anything. It's a handy little tool I received for Christmas last year. I have the drill bits head on right now. And I have a phone book for safety. I'm going to drill into it because what else is a phone book good for these days? I'm just going to put one of my pieces on top, turn it on, make sure I have it uh, lined up where I want it. And it was that quick. I have a little hole in the top. I'm going to string a piece of ribbon through it. Ribbon I just got at the, you guessed it, Dollarama. They were out of the kind of gold color I usually use, but I picked this white, which I think goes nicely with the little bee's wings, so that will be okay. want to leave space so they can hang it on their tree and then I'll do a bow over top. There we go. The finished product.